Lee's traveling to the place where his great-grandfather trained with the Pals in 1914. Knowsley Hall. It's quite posh, isn't it? It's well in keeping with these middle-class soldiers and their boats, isn't it? Turning up here and thinking, right, we'll all have a nice old grey and then we'll get on with the fighting, shall we, chaps? It's all very John de Measure, isn't it? It's awfully cold to be marching there. I wonder if we could put woolen socks on. There's a war on, Wilson. Lee's meeting historian, Dr Andrew Maunder. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Lee. Hello, Andrew. Welcome, Ted Nelsey. Thank you for having me. A lot of steps. Not at all. There are certainly are. Have you thought of a stair lift? <laughs> Let's go inside. This doesn't strike me as an army training centre. No, but Lord Derby, who uh, founded the idea of the Powers Regiments, said that his estate could be used as a training for the battalions. In these grounds? Um, well, not exactly on the driveway. Um, right. It's a very big estate. It's about 21,000 acres. Right. So they were kind of put um, out of sight, obviously, of the people living here. They want to make the men fitter, because they're not very fit. Um, I guess they all smoke and they've got kind of uh, desk Cushy, jobs. Cushy jobs. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they send them on long cross-country runs. Yeah. And very basic training. So, I mean, can you tell me anything more about Billy Mack? Well, we've got something here that might interest you. This is um, an account um, of the war written by um, F.C. Stanley, who was the commanding officer um, of the regiment. Christmas that year at Knowsley was a very cheery time. I well remember about the first performance I saw Billy Bray and his gang of optimists give was in Prescott Barracks. Billy Bray, he's on a picture with my great-granddad Billy Mack, so that's very interesting, yeah. but they've not mentioned Billy Mack. Okay. Unless he's one yeah. of the optimists. Yeah. Right. So we do have another document here from a bit later in the war. So the Grantham Journal, Saturday, May the 29th, 1915. OK, so this is clearly a big review of the evening, which ends with... At the termination of the above concert, Billy Bray's boys continued the amusement of the troops until after 9 o'clock. The artists included... Billy Mack, comedian. Hello. Oh, well, that's brilliant. That's a great start. So, you know, pianist, comedian, tenor, comedian, another comedian. So this sounds very much like a, a gang troupe of it-ain't-half-hot-mum type characters, doesn't it? I think it's along those lines that you have different acts and people doing their speciality. Comedian. It is a job that, even if you're terrible at it, you can actually yeah. have a crack at it. Because I can see the conversation. Can you play anything? No. Can you juggle? Nope. Sing? Got anything you can do? He's got a few gags in his repertoire, he's some pub gags he's heard and he's been telling his mates, why don't you get up and tell those gags on stage? That could have been how he started, you know. And I guess they wrote their own material, a lot of them as well, so you could spend time kind of working out an act yeah. and try trying it out on um, your fellow soldiers. So in the barracks, I think there's a lot of in-jokes about army yeah. life, a lot maybe taking the mickey out of superior yeah. officers. But not in front of the officers, right? Really not in front of the officers. Although if they did, the officers could claim to be a good sport. So under normal circumstances, I would be reading this thinking, oh, isn't this exciting? My great-granddad's comedy career has started. But I'm reading the date and I'm well aware that a few months after this, he goes off, which I assume, to fight in the First World War. Yeah, he goes off to northern France. 